In this example, we're going to remind ourselves how to find the critical T values, but this time these are going to be for a right-tailed, left-tailed, and two-tailed tests, unlike just for the confidence interval, which we found in chapter 9. Okay, so let's start off with the first one. We have alpha equal to 0 0.01. Our degrees of freedom is 12. So that was convenient. They told us our degrees of freedom right away. And then they tell us that the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 22. Hmm, well that's intriguing. So mu greater than 22 means we're looking at a right-tailed test. So let's grab the inferential statistics sheet. And we're in section 10.3, so we're talking about mu rather than um, p proportions. And we're looking at a left-tailed, or no, right-tailed? Right-tailed test. Got it. So let's go grab it. So right-tailed test is a greater than test. So we want to look at this picture, these pictures right here. And we're choosing the one on the right, the right-tailed test. So we want to have alpha and T alpha. And we can find the critical T value using either inverse T or the T table if possible. Okay, so let's go here. We want to find, um, there's alpha, 0 0.01, that's the right tail, and it's a positive value we're looking for. So let me grab inverse T, which is in the distribution menu, it's number four, and it was zero point, I'm sorry, I can't remember, 0 0.01, and degrees of freedom is 12. 0, 1, degrees of freedom, 12, paste, enter. Now that gives us the negative value, negative 2.681. That's fine, negative 2.681. But if we wanted the positive value, we would do the complement, 0.99 over here. Because 0.99 would make it so that um, we're looking at the value on the right. Because if you recall, inverse t always takes left tail area. So if I do 0 0.99 instead, complement of 0 0.01, that would give me positive 2.681. So either way you want to go, doesn't matter. You just have to know that the value that itself that you're looking for is positive. So you want the positive 2.681 because you're on the right hand side. Zero is in the middle of any T curve. All right, so now let's look at a left tailed test. Oh, before I go do that, let's look, go to check the table real quick. So 0 0.01 is in here. It's right here, 0 0.01. And we want a degrees of freedom equal to 12. And so when you go down, there it is, 2.681 right there. So the table works just as well on this one. Sometimes the table doesn't work because we have values that aren't in the table, but this one was totally in the table. All right, now what about a left-tailed test of a mean with alpha equal to 0 0.0025 and n equals 28? Well, we have to start off by finding the degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 28 minus 1, which would be 27 in this case. Oops, sorry, I had to scroll, zoom in a minute there. So 27, there's your degrees of freedom. Now, this is a left-tailed test, so my picture here is not correct. Let me fix that. All right, there we have it. So we have 0 0.0025. It's a very, very small tail that's shaded in over there. And the degrees of freedom is 27. So I want inverse T, 0 0.0025, 27. Paste, and then press Enter. And I get negative 3.057. So that's what I would have, negative 3.057. And just on a side note, let's see if we can find it in the table. So it's the 0 .0025 column. Degrees of freedom is 27. So we go down to the bottom and there it is, 3.057. Now the table only gives positive values. Basically everything in the table is a right-tailed item. And you can tell that because of the picture up on the top. So everything in this table is right-tailed. We want left-tailed right here. So we just have to make it negative. So our answer is negative uh, 3.057 and technically it's a negative t value negative t.0025 all right now what about a two-tailed test okay so alpha is 0 0.30 and n is 61 so to start with I know my degrees of freedom is 60 because 61 take away 1 is 60 then I need to take alpha and I need to cut it in half because in a two-tailed test let me grab this you can see that each of the tails is alpha over 2, and that's why your critical values are t alpha over 2. They're the same critical values you were using for a confidence interval back in chapter 9. All right, so if I take 0 0.30, 30%, and I cut it in half, I get 15%, which is 0.15. So I'm going to go find 0.15, inverse t, 
0.15 and then 60. Paste. Enter. And I get negative 1.045. And just for fun, let's go look at it in the table real quick. It's the 0.15 column, drop to 60, and there it is, 1.045. All right, so this means that we have plus or minus 1.045 as our two critical values. We need both of them because it's a two-tailed test. You have one on the left and one on the right, and so you have to find both of them. But honestly, when you found one, you've sort of found the other, at least with a T distribution, just like with a Z distribution. All right, we've reviewed how to find critical values for tests. I'll see you back here for more tutorials.